Would you please join me as we say together the model prayer from the Bible. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you uh, this morning for being here. This morning what I want to speak about is in the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 17. We'll read that in just a moment, but... uh, Uh, When I was listening to the words of some of the songs that we sang this morning about bringing all your faults at the foot of the cross and all of your addictions, all of your failures, and then listening to uh, coming back to the heart of worship, it's all about you, Lord, it's all about you. I could not help but think as I want to speak this morning on getting life back on track. Getting life back on track. So many times, most of us go along through life pretty well, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, something happens, and we find ourselves veering off of the track of life. And with all of the things that are happening around us, with all of the things that are coming at us from all different directions, sometimes it's easy for us to get off track. Sometimes it's easy for us to lose our focus. And so this morning, because so many things out there want to squeeze us into a corner uh, where we're not doing God's will, where we're not living uh, the life that uh, Jesus wants us to live, that abundant life that he spoke about in John 10, 10. So oftentimes there are things out there that crowd the best out of our lives. It's easy to drift away sometimes. It's easy to lose purpose. Sometimes it's easy to lose our perspective. It's easy just to drift along. It's easy sometimes just to daydream rather than to be challenged that where we are in life is that where God wants us to be? Is that where God expects us to be? I'm sure this morning, all over the world, there are many people that are experiencing a train wreck type of life. When Robert Robinson wrote his hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, behind those words came a testimony that he gave. He realized that his life had drifted Away, his life had gotten off track. And when he penned these wonderful words, To come thou fount of every blessing, he penned a verse that said, Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Let me tell you, sometimes we find ourselves drifting away from the God we love. There are other times we just sinfully and selfishly rebel against God. And uh, then we wonder, as we have oftentimes gone astray, as the prodigal son did, sometimes we waste our lives in sin and rebellion and selfishness and life gets derailed and we get off a track. Maybe you're here this morning, maybe you're listening in this morning and you feel that your train has derailed and somewhere you're off of the track of life and you're just flung out there and and you really just feel that you're marking time and and, uh, you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish for the Lord. Let me say this, you're not here by accident this morning. God loves you and God wants to speak to your heart this morning. God wants to move you uh, back on track. God wants you to be moving in the right direction. Whenever you consider Jesus and those disciples, Peter was the one that was always in the lead, as you well know. He sort of led the disciples, but Peter, like so many of us, he got off track and his train one day came to a screeching halt. 
he sinned a great sin. And in John chapter 21, verses 1 through 17, I want you to follow along with these verses. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, uh, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan, Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you also. They were out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, and that was John, by the way, said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, 153. And all, though there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord, Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said, to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Let me set this up for you. Peter had gotten derailed in life. Peter had gotten off track. Peter had created a great failure in his life. And in these verses, Jesus comes to Simon Peter after Peter had denied him three different times before Jesus went to the cross, and Jesus is wanting to draw Peter back in. He wants to restore him. He realizes that Peter has failed greatly in his life. How many of us here this morning, how does one get back on track with God when we've gotten off track somewhere along the way? I want to give you three steps this morning to get back on track with God. First of all, believe the truth that God loves you no matter what. Believe the truth that God loves you no matter what. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3, God is speaking about the nation of Israel. The Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Now this morning, I want to say to all of us, when you or I drift and we get off track with the Lord because of some sin or some great disappointment or some failure in our life, we begin to think, does God love me? 
I have failed in so many areas of my life. Does God really love me? You begin to look at yourself and you begin to question the love of God. And God surely couldn't love me with everything that I've done. I've gotten off track. I've been such a great failure. Let me tell you this morning, you're in good company because Peter felt the same way. He was the leader of the 12, of those 12 disciples. And he has denied Jesus three times. I mean, during the greatest hour, during the greatest need, when Jesus was being arrested, Jesus was being beaten. And while Peter warmed himself by the fire, someone said, aren't you one of his disciples? And Peter said, oh no, not me. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know this man. Then for a second time, someone said, hey, aren't you one of them? And and I recognize you. And Peter once again responds, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. And then the third time someone said, surely you're one of his disciples for your Galilean accent gives you away. Let me tell you, the Bible says that Peter cursed and swore and said, I don't know him. And the rooster crowed and the Lord turned and he looked at Peter and Peter went out. And Peter wept bitterly because Peter realized that he had failed the Lord so greatly. In the greatest hour when the Lord needed Peter, Peter turned his back on Jesus. You see, Peter denied Jesus three times in the darkest hour of Jesus' need. And what makes it worse is that just hours before that ever happened, he had told Jesus at the Last Supper that he would never deny him. Jesus said to all of those disciples on that night, when he instituted the Lord's Supper, you're all going to fall away because of me this night. And they said, Oh, no, we won't. And Peter said, Lord, these other guys may fall away, but but I'll never fall away. I, I, I mean, I'll even go to the death with you. Oh, really? Oh, really, Peter, is that right? I mean, Jesus said before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me three times that you didn't even know me. And Peter kept saying, oh, no, that's not going to happen to me. How many of us? here this morning have said, oh no, that would never happen to me. Oh no, I would never do that. I would never, ever disgrace the name of Christ. You see, Peter had boasted. Peter had bragged. He had argued with Jesus that that would never happen to him. In just a few short hours, three different times, Peter denies Jesus. He curses and swears that he did not know him. I can assure you this morning, all over the world, people are off track today. Jesus wants to put our lives back on track. And let me tell you, Peter, in his three denials, had stabbed the very heart of Jesus by betraying him. I wonder, though, what Peter thought that Jesus thought of him. Did Jesus still love Peter? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. Of course, Jesus loved him. And the good news this morning is that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. In fact, Romans chapter 8 tells us, can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us? If we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted, or hungry, or destitute in danger, or threatened with death? No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. You must believe this morning, I must believe this morning, the truth that Jesus loves you no matter what. There's a lot of people discouraged this morning. There's a lot of people struggling in their Christian life this morning because they know they've gotten off track and they wonder and they live with the guilt. 
does Jesus love me? Maybe you remember Jeffrey Dahmer in his murder case. He was one of the most twisted, one of the most uh, brutal killers that we've ever known. He killed 17 men and boys from 1970 to 1990. He tortured them. He raped them. He was guilty of necrophilia and cannibalism and dismembering their bodies. Dahmer was sent to prison. It was there that he found the love of God. He was killed while he was in prison by another inmate. But it just goes to show you that, as Carlos sang about, the blood of Jesus while ago. The blood of Jesus is the power to cleanse the vilest offender who truly believes. And I want you to know this morning, Jesus loves you as much today as he loved you from eternity past to eternity present to eternity future. Jesus loves you. Jesus is not finished with you. And John 3, 16 speaks of God's love for this world. I'm reminded of the song, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene, and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. You see, Peter had to come to the place where he believed the truth that even though he had failed Christ miserably, Christ loved him as much as he had ever loved him. So a life application to get back on track is to, first of all, believe that Jesus loves you no matter what you've done. Secondly, this morning, understand that Jesus wants you and me to love him back. Jesus wants you and me to love him back. The thing God wants from you and me this morning is your heart. We sang a few moments ago, take me back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Let me tell you, God wants your very heart. When I speak of your heart, I'm speaking not about the organ in your chest. I'm speaking about the whole essence of who you are, that God wants you that God wants all of you. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. God wants our love. God wants our attention. God wants our devotion. And that's what God is after more than anything else. He loves us with an everlasting love, and he wants us to love him back. Let me tell you, Christianity is a love relationship with a personal encounter with Jesus. He loves you no matter what, and what he wants is for you and me to love him back. The question this morning is this, are you in love with Jesus? Are you in love with Jesus this morning? Do you love him with all your heart? With all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might? You see, Jesus deserves that kind of love from us, and that's what he talks to Peter about as he's getting Peter back on track. He's speaking to him here about love. You see, from being a fisherman to eating breakfast there with these disciples, he lovingly fed Peter and the others. He expressed love to them through that service, and he asked Peter three questions. Peter three times had denied Jesus before the cross. And now after the cross and after the resurrection, now Jesus is out there uh, by the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. They've been fishing. They hadn't caught a thing. Jesus tells them to cast their net on the right side, and they catch more fish than they could hardly drag in. Jesus prepares a little fire by the seaside, and he asks them to bring some of the fish they've caught. Jesus is going to have breakfast with them, but Jesus is going to posit a very penetrating heart, soul-searching question to Peter. 
Jesus is going to ask him, basically, how much do you truly love me? Are you in love with Jesus this morning? Do you love him with a supreme love? Or do you just love him? Jesus will ask him, do you love me? Agapeo, that's the highest form of love. That's the Greek word for love. It's the love that Jesus has for you and for me and for this world. It's an unconditional love. I love you. It's the highest form of love. Jesus will ask him, do you agape me? Do you love me with that kind of love? The second time, Jesus will ask him, do you love me? Same word, agape do you love me with this supreme love? Sadly, when Jesus asked him the third time, Jesus gets down to where Peter is. Do you love me, phileo? It's a brotherly love. It's not the highest form of love. You see, Peter had not gotten there. Peter had not reached that. I want to ask you and me a question this morning I think is so vital to us. How much do I truly, genuinely love Jesus? Because he knows. He's the all-knowing. Do I love him with all there is within me? You see, and Jesus is saying, to you and to me this morning, do you really love me? Do you really love me with all of your heart? Do you love me with all of your soul? Do you love me with all of your mind? You see, agape love would be the highest form of love. It's supreme love. It's God's kind of love. It's a love that is not based upon a condition. It's a love that says, I love you with an everlasting love. Jesus is saying to Peter, Peter, do you love me like that? Do you love me, Jesus said in our text, more than these? Jesus is saying that more than these, what is Jesus saying? Do you love me more than these? Perhaps he's saying, Peter, do you love me more than this 153 fish y'all just caught? Do you love me more than your fishing career? Peter, do you love me more than all of these other disciples love me? Peter, how much do you truly love me? Peter had boasted. Peter had said he would go all the way with Jesus to prison or to death. Peter was basically saying, Lord, I love you more than all of these things. But you see the real question, when the rubber met the road there before the crucifixion, Peter had already denied Jesus three times. Jesus was saying, how much do you love me? Finally, he saw that Peter couldn't get to the agape love. And that third time, Jesus uses that Greek word that we get the, the city of Philadelphia. The Greek term phileo, which means brotherly love. I'm afraid that most of us, if we are honest, would have to say, Jesus, I love you. I, I, I really love you. But Jesus, I, I'm just not on that top rung of that supreme type of love. Peter, how much do you love me? Do you love me more than family? Do you love me more than friends? Do you love me more than TV? Do you love me more than pleasure? Do you love me more than sports? Do you love me more than money? Do you love me more than your career? You see, Jesus already knew the answer. He was just giving Peter time to think about how much do I really, really love you? Jesus loved you and me so much. He gave everything. He gave his all. He shed his lifeblood as the song says, for you and me. Do you love me? How much do you truly 
love me. Let me tell you this morning, I believe that I can say with confidence that most Christians are living way below what Jesus asked Peter. Peter, how much do you love me? Oh, you're willing to go to the death with me, to prison with me? But yet you denied me three times. Peter, do you really love me? How much do you really love me? I was sharing with my Sunday school class this morning that in many of the polls that are being taken today, it's staggering to see how evangelical Christians measure up to once what they measured up with when asked biblical questions. Do you really believe this? Do you really think this happened? Do you... And, the statistics are becoming staggering among evangelical Christians that once thought this, that now think this. And I shared with my class this morning, I think that's just another sure sign that you and I are living in the latter times is because people are falling away from what they even once thought and where they now stand. Let me tell you, Jesus changes gears and he says to Peter do you love me do you love me more than these Peter said you know it's really interesting when he goes back and uses Peter's name Simon son of Jonah Jesus goes back to Peter being just the fleshly sinful person that he was and Jesus just gets back to where Peter is Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. Lord, you know I phileo you. I I, I love you with with that kind of a a, a love. Jesus asked again, do you love me? How much do you love me? You see, if you're off track this morning, Jesus wants to get you back on track. And Jesus is coming with the question, How much do you love me? Do you love me supremely above everything else? Because if you don't love me that much, then you're off track somewhere in life. Let me tell you, if you want to get back on track, first of all, believe that tr- the truth that Jesus loves you no matter what you've done. Secondly, understand that Jesus wants you to love him back. And thirdly, rejoice that you can be restored in your relationship with God. I'm so grateful that Peter's flaws, I'm grateful that Peter's failures were not final. Aren't you thankful this morning that God loves us so much that he wants to restore us back to where we need to be? The book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16 says, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Let me tell you, failure this morning is not final Failure is not final. Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful that every morning when you wake up, aren't you grateful that you have a clean sheet of paper to start all over again tomorrow morning when you awaken? Think about what Peter said and what Jesus said. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. You see, Peter thought after the resurrection, after Jesus had met with them on that second Sunday night and Thomas was there and realized it was Jesus, you know, Peter just went back to fishing. Business as usual. Jesus wanted to know, Peter, do you really love me? If you really love me, then you need to get on with the purpose that I called you from fishing. I called you to go out there and change your world. One of these days, the master's coming back. You and I will stand in his presence individually. According to the Bible, we'll give an accounting of our lives from the moment we got saved. 
Let me tell you this morning, if you feel like you're off track, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus restored Peter. And let me tell you, Jesus can restore you. Jesus can restore me. Jesus can get us back on the track of life. Let me tell you, there's a song that says, it's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord. You see, it's not my neighbor, it's not my friend, it's me, O oh Lord. We got a lot of people in this world that love to point fingers at everybody, to try to point out everybody's sins. Let me tell you, God will point them out through his word. And I'm grateful this morning that one of these days to stand in his presence, how much did you really love me? Is it with an agape love, Lord, I give you my entire being, my entire life, all of my heart, all of who I am. Lord, I give you my all. We sing an old song, give of your best to the master. But the question comes to me as I think of Calvary, is my master satisfied with me? How much do you and I love Jesus today? Would you stand as we pray together? Father God, as we pause today, thank you for what we're reminded of in Peter's life. Father, that he, like all of us, had his faults, his failures, his ups, his downs, and yet to deny you three times when you were going to the cross to save him from his sins. Oh God, how often do we deny you in our daily lives? God, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let your joy explode within us. May we exude to a world out there that so desperately needs. As the bell choir played so beautifully this morning, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word. God, remind us this morning. Remind us through the, your word this morning Oh God, that as the psalmist said, he remembers my frame, he knows that I'm dust. God, I'm grateful for the story that the Holy Spirit penned within the book of John. This fishing scene there by the Sea of Galilee. To see Peter in all of his raw sin. To see him in all of his failure and yet he walked with you he talked with you he ministered with you and to realize that he failed miserably God may it remind us of our failures that oh God may we take hope in the fact today that you're restoring power lifted Peter up out of the doldrums of life and set his feet anew, put him back on track to let him know how much you loved him. And God, we thank you today for that supreme love. Oh God, help us to love you more because you want to be loved back. 
Speak to us today, oh God, I pray. Father, if there's someone here this morning that wants to come and join this church, speak to their heart. If there's someone here this morning that needs to trust you, speak to their heart, Holy Spirit, I pray. For this is your invitation. In Christ's name, amen.